Okay, so continuing on. So Michigan is going to lose some games. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. 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 I'm sure they will. <laughs> at, least, at least a couple. It's, ex- it's, ex- it's, it's expected. <laughs> I'm going to, like, pull up, like, their record from last year. The bad thing is that it sets in alphabetical order. So I'm going to go back to Ohio State. Last year, Ohio State finished 12-2, and 8-1 and one in the Big Ten. Their Big Ten loss was against Iowa. The two losses was Oklahoma and Iowa. Of course, they have Ohio State going 12-1, and 8-1 and one in the Big Ten. Now, Michigan, last season, they finished... Eight and five, five and four in the Big Ten, losing to Michigan State, Penn State, Wisconsin, Ohio State, and their non Big Ten loss was South Carolina in that bowl game, Outback Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. And then they have Michigan going ten and two, seven and two in the Big Ten. Now let's go on to Penn State. Let's say get Penn State up here. Oh, here they are. All right, Penn State. Last year. Penn State finished 11-2, and 6-2 and two in the Big Ten. Those losses were against Ohio State and Michigan State. They have – now they have Penn State finishing 9-3, and 6-3 and three in the Big Ten. The Lions are the only team from the East that plays both Wisconsin and Iowa, and they get Ohio State and Michigan State at home. So what do you think about that? Do you think – do you agree with that or think they'll do better? Do you think Penn State – do I think they'll do better than last year? Yeah, no, I don't. They lost their running back. They lost other players. At least that's what I'm hearing. I'm not. A, I'm not a Penn State guy, so I don't know. But I don't think they're going to do as good. Yeah, I think they'll win at least nine games. That's my prediction. That I would predict that nine, ten games. And then. Fourth place in Big Ten East is Michigan State. Yeah. Last year, last year Michigan State finished ten and three, a lot better from twenty sixteen. Yeah. It finished seven and two in the Big Ten. Those losses were against. Those losses were against Northwestern in a, a triple overtime and Ohio State, and their non Big Ten loss was against Notre Dame. Freaking Notre Dame, man. They're always Notre Dame. This next season, they have Michigan State finishing 9-3, and 6-3 and three in the Big Ten, so same as Penn State. The Spartans head, head west to play at, at Arizona State in Week 2. They don't play Iowa or Wisconsin. So that seems about right. Mm-hmm. I mean, Michigan State finished 9-3 and three last year, but they finished 7-2 and two in the Big Ten. So they're saying Michigan State's three losses – are going to be against Big Ten opponents. So they have them beating Utah State, Arizona State, and Central Michigan, which is expected. So who do you think those three losses will be against? So they don't play Iowa or Wisconsin. Ohio State, maybe Michigan, and Penn State? Penn State? I can see Penn State. Have them going three State. losses in the Big Ten. They don't play Iowa or Wisconsin. Unless if they have them like, losing to Northwestern again. Does it, hold on. I don't think that they'll have Northwestern beating them. Well, they play North. Well, that well, game was at Northwestern last that's year. True. Okay, then this time it's in East Lansing. Fifth, fifth place in the Big Ten is the Maryland Terrapins. Last year, Maryland finished four and eight, two and seven in the Big Ten. Their two Big Ten wins were against Minnesota and Indiana, and their other two wins was Texas and Towson. Towson's an FCS team. This this next season, they have them going six and six, four and five in the Big Ten. The, the return game versus Texas will be in Landover in Week One, not at Texas this time. The crossover games aren't bad. Minnesota, Illinois, and Iowa. Is their opponents? Huh? If they play those four. Or yeah, that's three? crossover is like East and West. Oh, okay. So six and six. So they have them. Yeah. I don't know. They have them losing a couple. No, wait, never mind. Hold on. Just forget what I said. All right. Then Indiana. 
team that doesn't seem to do good mm. ever. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Is Indiana? Right. Do, do. Last year, Indiana finished five and seven, two and seven in the Big Ten. Their two Big Ten wins were against Illinois and Rutgers. Their other, their three other wins were against Virginia, Georgia Southern, and Charleston Southern. So they beat nobodies. <laughs> they actually shut out Rutgers, forty-one to nothing. They shut out Charleston Southern. Now this year they have Indiana finishing six and six, three and six in the Big Ten. Yep. The Week One trip to Florida International is not a gimme. IU plays four of its final six games at home, including the rivalry game versus Purdue. I could see them winning seven. You could see them winning seven too, maybe six or seven. Oh no, you. So their their three losses. Is, so Maryland. They actually have Maryland losing a game that's not against the Big Ten. And they have Indiana winning all of their non-Big Ten teams. Non-conference games. Because they say all of their losses is going to be against Big Ten teams. Okay. And finally, last place in the Big Ten East is the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Last year, let's to get there. I wish these were easier to manage to get through. No, that's the West. All right, Rutgers. Last year, Rutgers finished 4-8, and 3-6 and six in the Big Ten. So they got more Big Ten wins in the past few teams. Their three Big Ten wins were against Illinois, Purdue, and Maryland. And their other win was against Morgan State, where they won 65 nothing. They got shut out twice with a 56 to nothing loss against Ohio State and a 41 to nothing loss against Indiana. Almost got shut out against Michigan State. Almost got shut out against Penn State. This year, they have Rutgers finishing 4-8, and eight, but going 1-8 in, in the Big Ten. A lot worse. Hmm. So could Rutgers be favored in five of its first six games? Texas State, at Kansas, Buffalo, Indiana, and Illinois? It's possible. Indiana, Indiana and Illinois. They, have, they have only have Rutgers beating one of those. I can see them beating Illinois. Yeah, me too. I, but Indiana, I'm not. Probably not. I could, I would probably, I would favor Indiana over Rutgers. Me too. Okay, now I'm gonna go to now. It's time for the Big Ten West. So first place in the Big Ten West is the Wisconsin Badgers. Last Obviously. year they finished 13 and one, went undefeated in the Big Ten. Their only loss was in the Big Ten championship against Ohio State. Now, I guess you could say, oh, they didn't go undefeated in the Big Ten. Well, it's just regular season. Of course, they won their bowl game. Undefeated in Big Ten. They won the Orange season. Bowl against Miami, and they were they shut out Minnesota in the last game of the season. They almost shut out BYU, and their other games were huge wins, rather close games. This year, they have Wisconsin finishing 10-3, and two in the Big Ten. So some Big Ten losses. The Badgers will be tested. They play at Michigan and at Penn State in crossover games. It also must visit Iowa, Northwestern, and Purdue. Iowa, Northwestern, and Purdue. I don't see Purdue or – what was the first one? Um, Purdue, Northwestern, and who? Iowa. Iowa. I don't see Purdue or Iowa giving them a ch- challenge. Northwestern, I guess, a little because bit. Iowa likes to surprise people. In bad ways. In bad ways. Good ways for some t- sometimes, but bad ways in, o- in, o- in others. Okay, so second place in the Big Ten West will be the Iowa Hawkeyes. Last year, Iowa finished 8-5, and five, only going 4-5 and five in the Big Ten. Their losses were against Penn State, Michigan State, Northwestern in overtime, Wisconsin, and Purdue. They did not shut out anybody, and they did not get shut out, and they won their bowl game in the Pinstripe Bowl against Boston College 27-20. This year they have Iowa going eight and four again, but this time going five and four in the Big Ten. The Hawkeyes catch a break, playing only one of the Big Four from the East, and that's Penn State. All three non-conference games are at home, and those are Northern Illinois, Iowa State, and Northern Iowa. So, how do you feel about that, Iowa? American uh, Iowa. Yeah, eight wins. That's what they did last year. 
Yeah. I don't think they're going to do as a good that. I don't think they're going to do as good as they did in 2015 where they went to the Big Ten Championship but lost to Michigan State. Maybe, maybe they could be su- surprised by a team. Maybe they'll have an upset loss or something. It's like they get surprised and this noise from Solid Snake just pops up and goes, <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, All right. you lost. It's like, you don't expect this. How dare you come here and lose? I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Third place in the Big Ten West is the Purdue Boilermakers. Last year, Purdue finished 7-6, going 4-5 and five in the Big Ten. Their losses were against Michigan, Wisconsin, Rutgers, Nebraska, and Northwestern. And their, non- big, and their non-Big Ten loss was against Louisville, which was at Indianapolis. And they won their bowl game against Arizona in the Foster Farms Bowl. This year, they have Iowa going not Iowa. Purdue going seven and five, finishing five and four in the Big Ten. The Boilers have two intriguing non-league home games: Missouri and Boston College. They play Ohio State and Michigan State from the East. Mm. Now, what about that? How about that now? Well, I think they can win those non-conference games. Yes, those two East games. I don't see them winning. I don't either. And, of course, they play every team in the West. Now, fourth place in the Big Ten West is the Northwestern Wildcats. Last year, they finished 10-3, going 7-2 in the Big Ten. Their losses were against Wisconsin and Penn State, and their non-Big Ten loss was against Duke. They lost 41-17, <laughs> and they won the Music City Bowl against Kentucky. And note, they had three overtime games in a row last year. Iowa, Michigan State, and Nebraska, they won all of those. So, after their Penn State loss, which was played on October 7th, Northwestern won every single game of this left of the season after that game. This year, they have Northwestern going 6-6, 3-6 and six, three and six in the Big Ten. The Cats avoid Ohio State and Penn State, but host Michigan and play at Michigan State. Notre Dame visits Evanston. I don't agree with them going six and six. Northwestern. Yeah, they've been doing. Who do they play again? It says they, they avoid Ohio State and Penn State, but have to host Michigan and play at Michigan State. And Notre Dame visits Evanston, which is where Northwestern is located. I think Notre Dame will beat Northwestern. She's the first time in like thirty years or something. Yeah, I I I do think that. Michigan and Michigan State. I don't know. I could. I. I think they'll win more than six. I think they can beat North. Or I'm sorry. Uh, they can beat Michigan or Michigan State. I don't think they will, but they could. No. All right. In fifth place in the Big Ten West. I think I might have been saying East this whole time. If I have, I. I'm sorry, but it's the Big Ten West. Fifth place is the, is the Nebraska Cornhuskers. I'm not corn huskers go get some corn now. <laughs> <laughs> Last year Nebraska went four four and eight, going three and six in the Big Ten. There now if they have a losing record that low, I'm not gonna name all their losses, I'm just gonna name their wins. They beat Rutgers, Illinois, and Purdue. Their only their win against a non Big Ten team was Arkansas State and they did not make a bowl game that year. This year they have them going six and six. Three and six in the Big Ten. Another Welcome to the Big Ten, Scott Frost. Nebraska faces three of the Big Four from the East, not Penn State. It also plays Wisconsin. So that means Nebraska plays Michigan State, Michigan, and Ohio State. Feel bad for them. <laughs> the Ohio State game is going to be rough. <laughs> it's them. at Ohio State, at Michigan, and at home against Michigan State. At least they got one home game against one of the Big Four. Rip Ohio, rip Nebraska. Yeah. All right. Sixth place in the Big Ten West is the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Last year, Minnesota went five and seven, finishing two and seven in Big Ten play. Their only two wins against Big Ten teams were Illinois and Nebraska. Their other wins were against Buffalo, Oregon State, and Middle Tennessee. And they won their first three games. They actually got shut out their last three games of the year against Northwestern and Wisconsin. This year they have been going six and six, three and six in the Big Ten. 
The go excuse me. The Gophers do not play Michigan, Penn State, or Michigan State. But the week two game versus Fresno State will be intriguing. Why? Why will it be intriguing? Because they're just similar. Because Fresno just... State's better than them. But they're but Fresno State's a group of five team and typically power five teams typically beat group of five teams. Okay. That doesn't mean it will happen, but okay. And finally, last place in the Big Ten West is the Illinois Fighting Illini. Yeah, they've been fighting for sure. <laughs> fighting. <laughs> the quotations. Quote, quote, unquote, fighting. Last year, Illinois finished 2-10, and 10, going 0-9 in the Big Ten. They've been fighting for wins. <laughs> their only two wins were against Ball State and Western Kentucky. After their Western Kentucky game, which was in week two, right? Yeah, they lost all their games after that. <laughs> they did not get shut out last year, though. They were close against Northwestern. They actually scored a touchdown. This year, they're wow. like three and nine, one and eight in the Big Ten. The Illini can make a statement in week three when they play South Florida at Soldier Field. Four of the final six are on the road. So, who is a Big Ten team they haven't beaten? They only have Rutgers beating one Big Ten team and Illinois what? beating one. Do they play against each other? Wait. Wait, let's see. Oh, dude, Illinois plays Rutgers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the win they'll give in, they're giving Illinois. Look at Illinois. I don't know. 2013, Illinois got four wins. 2014, they got six wins. You 20, said, oh, wait, never mind. 2013, four wins. 2014, six. I said that because it was four wins. 2014, six wins. 2015, five wins. 2016, three wins. Last year, two wins. So they've just been going down. So that's how they pick the Big Ten. Well, now here's some games to watch in the Big Ten. September first, Michigan at Notre Dame. A strong, a strong start is crucial. I can't read. A strong start <laughs> is critical for Jim Harbaugh in year four. But Michigan faces a much improved Notre Dame defense and brings back ten starters. Another game, September eighth, Iowa State at Iowa. The Hawkeyes open with three potentially tricky non-league foes: Northern Illinois, Iowa State, and Northern Iowa, and need this one. September fifteenth, Ohio State versus TCU. That is the um, that's the game that's at Arlington. TCU's typically stout defense will provide a good first test for Ohio State's new starting quarterback in this neutral game in Arlington, Texas. September September twenty second, Nebraska at Michigan, Big Ten opener for both teams, and Nebraska's first league contest under new coach Scott Frost will be crucial. Michigan's gonna win. Yeah. Hopefully. September and on the same day, September twenty second, Wisconsin and Iowa. If revenge doesn't motivate the Hawkeyes who produced sixty six total yards in last year's loss, the chance to gain a leg up in the West will sh- surely will. So then September 29th, Ohio State at Penn State. That's gonna be a good game. Last yeah. year's game was awesome. Ohio State won, which wasn't good, but you gotta admit that was a good game. Played earlier than usual, this game has decided the East Division and ultimately the Big Ten champion in each of the two past seasons. October 13th, Michigan State at Penn State. Penn State gets a week off between its home showdowns with Ohio State and MSU, which has won four of the team's last five meetings. October 20th, Michigan at Michigan State. Jim Harbaugh is 1-5 against Michigan's primary league rivals. But the lone triumph came in East Lansing two years ago. And it wasn't even that great of a game. Yeah. It was kind of a boring game. October 27th, Wisconsin at Northwestern. Pat Fitzgerald's team, which has 27 wins since 2015, might provide the best challenge to Wisconsin in the West Division. So they haven't gone 6 and 6 yet. Hmm. Yet they haven't gone 6 and 6. Go to Northwestern schedule. Are you done? No, there's still some more. I'll go to Northwestern after this. Okay. Right, November 10th, Ohio State at Michigan State. The Spartans have lost their last six home games against Ohio State, but they'll be motivated after being whipped 48-3 to last year in Columbus. And then the same day, November 10th, Wisconsin at Penn State. It's a crucial late-season division crossover and a rematch of the 2016 Big Ten Championship. Wisconsin hasn't won in Happy Valley since 2003. Finally, November 24th, Michigan at Ohio State. Whether the, whether the spot was good or not in 2016, Harbaugh hopes to avoid becoming the first Michigan coach to begin his tenure 0-4 versus Ohio State. 
I'm, I'm afraid he might. I think they referred to the spot, like whether JT got the first down yeah. or not. All right. Yeah. Now, those are the Big Ten games to watch next year. Now, I'm going to go to Northwestern's schedule. Because when I saw their schedule, it looked kind of weird. It's like the first couple of games are kind of weird. They play two FCA-ish teams. <laughs> all right. They're at – all right, first – at Purdue, then versus Duke, versus Akron, versus Michigan, which I think the bet- between the Akron and Michigan game is their bye week. Then at Michigan State, versus Nebraska, at Rutgers, versus Wisconsin, versus Notre Dame, and their final three games of the year are away games at Iowa, at Minnesota, and at Illinois. But those are easy. Except their, maybe Iowa. Their first game is on August 30th. It's a. It's a, that's gonna really be a, early that's gonna game. Be a Friday, and it's against Purdue. And I saw they had overall in the out of 130 teams, they had them right by each other. Like yeah. one of them was 45, one of them was 46. I can't remember which was which, but I'm excited for that game because I think it's going to be a good one. And that Notre Dame game is kind of weird too because it's like right in the middle of our when Big Ten teams start playing conference games, and then there's just Notre Dame slated in there somewhere. All right, so now I'm going to go back to Michigan here. I'm going to go over their 2017 rankings. Like, you know how rankings work for, like, their offense and defense? All right, so it's going to be Big Ten and National. There are 14 spots in the Big Ten and 130 spots in the National. So for scoring, on this is offense. We'll start with offense. So Michigan has scored an average of 25.2 points per game. Which they're ranked eighth in the Big Ten and ninety-first nationally. They got an average of one hundred and seventy-seven point seven rushing yards per game, which they're ranked fourth in the Big Ten and forty-ninth in the nation. So a lot better there. Mm-hmm. And passing, they got a hundred only one hundred seventy-one point two passing yards per game, eleventh in the Big Ten, a hundred and eleventh in the nation, and. Total, Michigan will get an average of 348 yards per game on offense, which is ranked ninth in the Big Ten and 105th in the nation for that. Now, those are terrible numbers, yeah. but their defense is a lot better. Michigan's defense only allowed an average of 18.8 points per game, which are third in the Big Ten and 13th nationally in that. They, get, they only allow 120 rushing yards per game, which are ranked sixth in the Big Ten and 18th nationally. Then they only allow 150, an average of 150 passing yards per game, which ranked first in the Big Ten and first nationally, so the best in that. And Michigan's defense allows an average of 271 yards per game, which ranked second in the Big Ten and third nationally. So as you can see, Michigan's defense a lot better than our offense. Of course, as we look at stats for their quarterbacks. John O'Corn threw 157 passes last season for 84 of those were completions for 973 yards through two touchdowns and six interceptions. Six. Six. Five of those were against Michigan State. Five of those six. And Brandon Peters. And they still only beat us by four. Yeah. <laughs> and then Brandon Peters. He threw 108 passes last year. 57 of those were for completions for 672 yards for four touchdowns and two interceptions. It's a lot better there. And Michigan was terrible on quarterbacks had a lot of incompletions. Like, listen to this. If you like incomplete passes, Michigan games were for you. (laughs) Michigan's offensive completion rate of 53.5%. Ranked 113th in the FBS. And the defense is 48.8% allowed ranked third. So that means Michigan only – so it means 53 – about 53% of Michigan's passes were complete last year. So basically – But failed. Yeah. Great defense, got awful offense. Their defense only – and 48% of their, their opponent's catches were completions. Only 48%. Which is a lot better there. All right. And I don't know. There's nothing much left except they're saying they're predicting Michigan next season will be going in the Rose Bowl against Washington. This year? This Yes, this okay. is. That's their prediction. The Rose Bowl. All right. Well, that's it. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Maybe next time you come out, we could do NFL.
This was really enjoyable. We had two parts. The last part ended unexpectedly. I didn't expect it to end. Yeah, apparently it ended at thir 30 minutes instead of an hour, which we originally thought. I just kept thought. it at this the whole time because I felt like we should. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. Next time I have Ethan over, we'll do another thing. May, uh, maybe, maybe tomorrow when we get up after Tyler leaves. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you next time. Bye.